Shout out to G-Man Boxing. All right, so Jaime Munguia stops Camille Sharameta in six rounds. Goes one round quicker than Triple G. I think that Triple G... It's hard to say was I more impressed with what Triple G... I was more impressed with how Triple G looked in the sense of he looked rejuvenated against Sharameta. This was um, this this really was Jaime Munguia versus a human punch bag. No disrespect to Camille Sharameta. He definitely had no quit in him. He, he just didn't... <sighs> He stood right in front of Jaime Munguia for six rounds. Didn't really do anything. Let himself get outworked. When you're standing... Look, Munguia was bigger, stronger, and he hit harder. Sharameta was smaller, and he has nothing, literally no punching power to keep Munguia off. So for Munguia, it was just target practice. It really was. The one thing I would say about McGee that I noticed early on was that he was using his jab more, which is something we don't very seldom see from him. You know, he was definitely using the good effect in the first few rounds. A few times, Sharameta was able to get through and land a couple of shots on Mungia when Mungia was opening up and letting the combinations go. He was walking onto a couple of hooks. But, you know, we often hear about people say, and I've said it myself, that punch of power is not, that the knockout ratio was not always indicative to how hard someone hits. Well, judging by the shots that were being thrown by Sharameta, and just the sheer look at the shots, he really doesn't have much punch there. There's not really any snap at all to his shots. So when he was, I, I suspect Munguia probably felt a couple of them shots early on. I thought, you know what, if he hits me, he hits me. This guy can't crack an egg, so he's not going to hurt me. If you're standing toe to toe with someone like a Triple G, because that's who people are talking about, well, you're going to be a bit more circumspect because Triple G, he had Sarah up and down off the canvas, I think in every round bar the second. He had him up and down in most rounds. Munguia never dropped Sarameta. He came close to him with the sixth. But it was he never he never he didn't I say Triple G looked rejuvenated more so than anything else. With this fight it was more so Munguia versus a heavy bag. There was a few little things, as I said, the jab that was going well. He was going up to head and body, he was letting the uppercuts go. When Munguia lets the combinations go, they really are good to watch. Munguia is a fun little fighter to watch. I do enjoy watching him. He how do I describe it? At 154, he did what he needed to do. He won his world. He beat Saddam Ali, who was not, it was really a welterweight. And now he's fighting at 160 pounds. He's had fight. He had his first fight against Spike O'Sullivan. He stopped him in 11. And then he had the Trio Johnson fight. So he's been fighting kind of kind of fringe world level guys. And, and I would put, I'd actually say that um, Sarah Mehta is probably a level below both Spike O'Sullivan and Terio Johnson. He's probably more European level. And he really did show it in this fight. When I looked at that, when I looked at what he was doing in there against Jaime Munguia, I was thinking, what's the what, what have we learned from Jaime Munguia in the past? He doesn't like it when guys move. When they give him a bit of lateral movement, when they give him a bit of, you know, good footwork like Dennis Hogan did, he tends to struggle. He doesn't tend to struggle when you stand right in front of him. Again, if you're going to stand in front of him, have something to keep him off with. And, you know, he had none of that. You know, he really didn't. What I did find interesting was that Munguia wasn't able to drop his opponent. Now, a few people who fought Munguia and have fought Canelo, like Liam Smith, made a comment that Munguia, his speed is good, but his punching power is there, but Canelo hits harder. And, you know, what you'd have to say, the, the eyes can tell you that. You know, Munguia, it seems to me that he relies more on volume than sheer brute force. You know, I'm definitely not saying he's fed or fisted. He's definitely not. You know, he's accurate. He's got good punch selection and good speed. But for me, he even though he's got like, you know, 30 knockouts in his 37 wins, he doesn't appear to have, you know, devastating world level power. But saying that, very good accuracy, throws a lot of shots. And for someone who is so big, even at middleweight, you know, I've heard stories about him the day before, even at middleweight, you know, still needing lots of juice and lots of water to try and rehydrate. He definitely has a good little engine in him and he definitely can throw a lot of shots. So, Munguia for me is a fun fighter. He's a fun fighter to watch and him against Triple G, I mean, that would be all action. You know, they wanted to do that a couple of years ago when the Canelo fight fell through on the sink of the Mayo weekend. That didn't happen. That would have been too soon for Munguia. Now, Triple G, I think, is... I'm not going to say I would pick him necessarily over Triple G, but I think it's more an even playing field now. The Triple G, he's nearly 40, you know, although he did look, as I said, a bit more rejuvenated last time out. This was, as I said, it was a fun little fight. There's not really much to talk about, you know. The opponent had his moments of success 
in there you know when Munguia would like just let his defense down would open up would bore in and he was getting counted a bit but for the most part this was only going one way I remember the sixth round even before um, Munguia hurt, hurt the guy I remember thinking if I was in his corner after this round because he's he, he's not really changing anything he's, he's given no angles he's not moving he's got nothing to keep this guy off with me personally I would pull him out after this round and thankfully that's what exactly what the corner did because the biggest problem with Munguia is that he doesn't hit hard enough to knock you out by the looks of things or certainly not hard enough to knock this guy out and this guy was not going to quit so that's when you start that's when you see guys get injured so i was glad the corner stopped it when they did and that's really all she wrote like i said he got rid of um this guy around earlier than triple g did they both looked so so they both looked impressive doing it i think triple g the fact that he was bouncing the guy off the canvas just kind of made me enjoy that a bit more no offense to the guy but you know i like seeing your guys clinical and knock the guy out so that's my thoughts on that um let me know your thoughts what do you make of Mungia next now i believe he's I think, it's, I think the zone said he's mandatory for two titles. I would suspect WBO, and I'm not sure what the other one is. At middleweight, if he's mandatory for the WBO at middleweight, you'd be talking about Demetrius Andre. Now, both guys, although they're with different promoters, they're both the zone fighters. You would imagine they would make that fight. I would make Demetrius Andre firm favourite in that fight, personally. Yes, uh, Demetrius Andre is shown not to like pressure, but having said that, Jaime Munguia doesn't like it when guys move and I think Demetrius Andre is a much better mover than Dennis Hogan he hits a lot harder than Dennis Hogan and I think he'd do a much I think he'd win that fight personally if they made it next whether they make it next remains to be seen I think they're looking at Triple G that in itself is a great fight for Munguia so you know Munguia I I enjoy watching him again I don't know how far he's going to go middleweight but he's one of them fighters where I'll enjoy I'll enjoy the ride that's the best I'll enjoy the ride at Munguia now I'm going to leave it there. Hope you enjoyed the video. Smash the like button if you did. Subscribe, of course, if you all haven't already. Help your boy out. Hashtag G-Man's Rocks. All that good stuff for now. I'll talk to you. Peace.